With a fresh season underway, this video gives you a ranking of the 10 best NBA shooting guards. Devin Booker is poised to lead Phoenix back to the playoffs and solidify himself as a top 10 player. Paul George is doing his best to earn his new $226 million deal, and in the nation's capital, elite bucket getter Bradley Beal has a new running mate in the backcourt in Westbrook, but stay tuned to see where every one of these top two guards rank in week one of the new campaign. Welcome back to D-Flow Hoops. If you're new here and a basketball fan interested in NBA rankings, predictions, and stories, you're in the right place. Welcome aboard, so feel free to subscribe and click the bell so you get notified every time I post content. That's at least twice a week. Number 10, Shea Gilgis Alexander. With Chris Paul, Danilo Gallinari, Dennis Schroeder, and Steven Adams all moving on to other teams, the Thunder are officially committed to the future. They've given their young phenom at the two guard the keys to the franchise. Gilgis Alexander will have the opportunity to be OKC's number one scoring option, which will be a unique challenge for the man early in his career, and that should help the 22-year-old's development into an all-star caliber talent. The Canadian's now in his third pro campaign, but he was one of last year's most improved players, and he's already proven to be a valuable presence on both ends of the court. In 2019-20, Shea nearly doubled his points per game from his rookie total, and has averaged over a steal per game in his first two seasons. He's extremely polished for a young player, and has an intimidating combination of craftiness and wingspan. Number 9, Karis LeVert. LeVert's multifaceted talent on the wing off the bench for Brooklyn could be the X factor that pushes them over the edge in the East this year. He's a player who's continued to improve year after year, as in his fourth season with the Nets, Levert averaged around 19 points and 5 assists, which helped them secure the seventh seed in the East. This powerhouse Nets team now with a healthy Kyrie and KD is looking damn scary already, but when you take into account that they have another elite shot creator in Karis Levert as their third scorer, it's fair to question if this 2021 Nets team will be unbeatable this year. Number 8, Zach Levine. The roster surrounding him in Chi-Town is filled with players who are still looking for breakout seasons. However, amidst his teammates struggling, Levine's efficiency in scoring has reached an elite level. One thing that's always been completely overlooked about Levine's game, probably because he's a two-time slam dunk contest champ, is how good of a three-point shooter he is. His six seasons with the Wolves and Bulls has seen Zach make a blistering 37.5% of his three-point shots. Keep in mind, he takes a lot of attempts per game from out there. But Levine has to improve on the defensive end, but he's a three-level scorer offensively and deserves to be in a winning situation without a doubt a top eight player at his position. Number seven, Jalen Brown. JB's a strong, impactful defender who can both lock up players in one-on-one -on -one scenarios and rotate to the ball on the perimeter. What people have drastically overlooked about Jalen is his production and efficiency in 2020's conference finals. He put up 23, 7, and 3 with one and a half steals in the Celtics six-game series loss to Miami. However, in Boston's previous series, their seven-game battle with the Raptors, Brown shot just 25% from deep while attempting eight threes per game. But in the conference finals, Brown made 52.5% of his three-pointers. He's inconsistent with his shooting at times, but Brown's a locomotive in the open court and has exceptional dribbling ability for his size. At 6'8", 220 pounds of pure muscle, he significantly vamped his numbers across the board in his fourth pro campaign and showed up when he needed to in the playoffs, so I'm really hyped to see if he can take the next step in 2021. Number 6, CJ McCollum. CJ and Dame's Blazers were the victim of a LeBron and AD steamrolling these past playoffs in the first round, but even though McCollum was suffering through an injury, he still put up an efficient 23 points in Portland's five-game series loss. Portland shockingly snagged the first game of the series with CJ contributing 21, and he averaged an efficient 23 points for the series. And with the additions of Jones Jr., Covington, and a healthy use of Nurkic for the whole year, Portland has a chance to be a top seed in the West this season. They struggled in their first game, but McCollum has got a shifty mix of ball handling and supreme superstar-like shot making ability when he's at full strength. CJ suffered a non-displaced fracture in the first seeding game in the bubble, 
and struggled from the field to close out last season, but the play-in tournament was where his injury seemed like a non-issue. He finished with 29 points on 11 for 19 shooting in that game, including a number of clutch buckets down the stretch. After Portland advanced to the playoffs with a win by beating Memphis, McCollum gave an iconic post-game interview. What do you got left for the Lakers? I got a lot left. Uh, the good Lord has taken back. I broke my back spinal. Before a top five that, trust me, you can't miss, Cardick adds to his lead on the Community Speaks board by saying Kyrie's biggest problem is the media blowing things out of proportion, which can be distracting to his teammates. Questions on its way for next vid shoutout. Top five commenters with the most shoutouts at the end of 2020 get free NBA gear and the board resets. Number five, Paul George. On opening night, we saw the version of PG-13 that every Clipper fan was hoping would show up this past postseason. But George says he's back with the trainer that he had in his quote, MVP season. He's referring to the year where he was third in the race for that award behind Giannis and Harden in 2019. But if Paul can produce like he did in that season, given that now he has a top three player in the world in Kawhi Leonard next to him, the Clippers could become a serious problem. And while everyone, including myself, called paying him $226 million over five years dumb, the organization is putting trust in the player Paul once was. The impact of a trainer can be massive because when a player stops working with them without the practice, the skills once taught become less and less polished. So I'm predicting Paul George regains his MVP reputation and is much higher on this list the next time I do a shooting guard ranking. Number four, Devin Booker. These next two were extremely close, and because of what Devin Booker did in the bubble, that made it extremely tough not to put him any higher. He led the Suns to an 8-0 record, averaged 30 points in those seeding games, and Phoenix came up just short of the playoffs. In the bubble, he showed off his Kobe Bryant-esque post-up game and hit a game winner in the face of Kawhi and the previously ranked Paul George. As long as Devin Booker isn't facing a double team, he can get buckets on anyone, anywhere, at any time. Booker averaged 26.6 points, 4.2 boards, and 6.5 dimes last year, proving that he's one of the most talented young players in the NBA. Playing alongside Chris Paul, not only should Booker's averages go up, the Phoenix Suns should finally start winning. If the Suns are winning and Booker's on a roll, hitting ice-cold game-sealing shots like he did on opening night, then Devin could be in play for an MVP caliber season. Number three, Donovan Mitchell. The Spider had an iconic 2020 playoff showing against the Denver Nuggets. He broke Steph Curry's record for the most three-pointers made in a single series. For a player that's known as a slasher, Mitchell displayed that he's an explosive three-level scorer throughout that entire playoffs. When the lights are brightest, Mitchell shines. Utah Jazz fans were blessed the day they drafted this high-flying three-point shooting, absolutely mesmerizing talent that has a chance to be an NBA Hall of Famer. Number two, Bradley Beal. The Wizards being bottom feeders of the Eastern Conference last season was far from Beal's fault as he eclipsed 30 points per game, which was a career high for the 27-year-old. Beal's a solid two-way player, but he's known for his ability to hit incredibly difficult shots at a high volume. James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and Russell Westbrook, according to Bleach Report, were the only players last season who tossed up more contested shot attempts than Beal. His new backcourt partner Westbrook's already showing off a different mentality consisting of beaming smiles off the court and unselfish passing on the court, so Bradley's production should improve because of that this year. I mean, Paul George had his best season playing alongside Russell Westbrook, and if Beal can experience a similar connection with Brody throughout the year, then DC will make their first postseason appearance since 2018. Number one, James Harden. The biggest storyline in the NBA right now is where will the beard land? Will he stay in Houston? Will he get traded? And what's going on with him? Right now, he's practically forcing his way out of Houston, which I'll get to. But while his play style has been criticized due to his high volume of ISOs and over dribbling at times, it's a casual fan's take to say that James Harden was the issue for the Rockets' last playoffs in the bubble. Russ and James were an awful fit both personality-wise and in half-court scenarios. 
but James still found a way to produce at an MVP level, despite his number two option in Westbrook struggling to shoot from the floor and taking an excessive amount of attempts. Stats don't tell the whole story, but the argument that, quote, James Harden's selfish, which is why he hasn't won a ring, unquote, gets dismantled when you hear that Westbrook put up more attempts from the field than him. As much as I'm loving how Russ is playing in the nation's capital right now, he made 24% of the five threes he took per game in Houston's five game series loss to LA. But let's cut Russ some slack because with what's been going on recently, it's now clear to all of us that Harden has a challenging persona to coexist with. The most reputable NBA reporter Shams reported that Harden threw a ball at his rookie teammate Jay Sean Tate in a heated exchange. He's requested a trade several times, showed up late to training camp, and answers like these make it difficult to see Harden in rocket threads throughout the entirety of this season. About a week, do you feel any better about this situation now than you did before you arrived? Next question. As it stands though, he's still the greatest scorer on the planet, and I think in the right situation, is capable of winning a championship as the number one option. But either let me know your thoughts on the Harden situation, or name your favorite shooting guard and why down below for a chance at the shout out in my next upload. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops for on the go updates on the channel and the NBA. Keep watching some of my recent uploads. This was dflow and I'll see you next video.